What's up everybody? We are pumped to bring you a brand new series where we take project vehicles from start to finish, showing you every step along the way, and we call it Knucklehead Garage. Action! So I know you guys are used to seeing me in front of the camera all the time, but for our first project vehicle, we're gonna switch things up a little bit, and we're gonna have Carter take the lead on this one, and I'm gonna step behind the camera and help out here and there. So Carter, tell us a little bit about why you chose this vehicle and what all we're gonna be doing with it. All right, so this here is Project LS K5. It's a 1978 K5 Blazer. Um, kind of a little backstory of why I chose this project. Um, I've always loved K5s. My dad uh, had four or five, and uh, this was one that he had, and he sold it, and it's changed hands a few times, um, but I ended up finding it. it. This truck has actually been sitting in a barn stationary for over 16 years. Um, so we drug it out, brought it here to the shop, uh, started tearing it down. Um, it's actually, in the body and, and the chassis and all is in actually very good shape. Uh, of course, most of the drivetrain's trashed, but uh, as the name of the project states, we're going to be changing that. So um, kind of a, a build direction, obviously LS swap, modern drivetrain. Um, we're going to update the interior a little bit, do some suspension seats, harnesses, cage. Um, the, the direction of this is a, is a streetable trail rig. Um, we're going to leave it on leaf springs, um, update the axles a little bit. And we want to drive this thing, get it completed, and drive it from here in Alabama to Moab wheel it and come back. It's about a 2,500 mile round trip. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, on this episode, the first thing we're gonna get to uh, is, the, is the axles. Um, we're gonna do a one ton swap. Um, we found some military axles we're gonna throw under here. And uh, also uh, DIY four buys come on board and really helped us out with this. We're, doing a, we're gonna leave this truck on leaf springs and Kurt at DIY four buys is a master at um, doing suspension lifts uh, for square body trucks and he sent us a ton of parts uh, all kind of bracketry and bumpers um, so we're, we're really excited about that and we're ready to get moving so let's get to it so some quick uh, information about these axles uh, again pick these up out of a military truck it is a Dana 60 front uh, 456 gears so open front um, we tore it down went through it uh, wire wheeled it cleaned it up got it painted as you can see um, new diff covers um, it's stock knuckles, it's the stock 30 spline outers. Um, for now, we're just going to run those um, until we have problems and we, we'll probably upgrade those to 35 spline. Um, we did uh, replace all the kingpin bushings um, and one side had to replace the lower kingpin. Um, did the springless caps and uh, went ahead and put on a high steer arm because uh, we're going to do crossover steering. Um, the rear is 14 bolt, 456 again, this one's got a Detroit locker in it. Um, it was the same deal, we stripped it down. Um, if you, you might know the uh, one ton trucks, the spring perches on the rear are a bit narrower than a half ton. So we went ahead and cut those off, got it all stripped down, cleaned up and painted. Again, new diff cover. Um, went to a lug nut 4x4, grabbed their uh, disc brake kit for the rear. Comes with uh, caliper brackets, um, rotors. Uh, we put new studs. On the, on the rear and got some uh, new calipers and new brake pads uh, to go on it. So all fresh, all clean. These have, these have been sitting for a little while so they look a little dirty, but this is, these are all new parts. Um, got a pinion guard on the rear, of course. Let's head over to the table and uh, got a whole pile of parts laid out. We'll check out the parts and I'll show you what we're gonna use to get these axles under that truck. All right, so here are some of the parts we're gonna be using to do this swap. Uh, this swap is commonly referred to as a 52-56 spring swap. What that means is a 52 inch long spring goes into the front, 56 inch long spring goes into the rear. Um, so we called up Kurt at DIY 4x. Um, Kurt is an expert on this swap. This is a very common swap, um, especially with square body trucks. Um, the swap essentially, as it states, gives you longer leaf springs front and rear, which is going to attribute to some lift, better ride quality, and better articulation. Um, so Kurt sent us a pile of parts. We got shackles, easy inches, uh, flip brackets, shackle mounts, 
and this bad boy right here, this is called an A-bomb. Uh, the A-bomb kind of serves three purposes. Um, number one, it's a bumper. Um, it bolts onto your front frame rails. It, it also is a winch mount, and it has these brackets on either side here. Now these brackets um, include the, the front body mount, um, which you'll remove the factory uh, spring hanger and body mount. Um, so this one has new body mount and new front spring hangers that have multiple options for mounting. Now what this is going to do is allow you to mount that longer leaf spring in the front of the truck. And the, the multiple mounting holes here will give you some uh, really nice flexibility and adjustability um, when it comes to setting your shackle angle and <clears throat> depending on what length of spring you use, give you some options there. First thing we need to do is uh, take out the rear. Um, this is a 56 inch spring here. I bought these new. The 52 inch spring that goes under the front is actually underneath the truck right now. It's only it's in the rear. So this kit utilizes the factory rear leaf springs that are 52 inches long out of the factory truck. We throw them in the front. So we need to get those out first. So we're going to start in the rear, um, get that rear axle out, get those springs out and get them cleaned up. And while we're there, um, we'll throw on the shackle flip brackets, new shackles, and we'll get that 14 bolt um, installed under the truck. So you may be <clears throat> asking yourself, why go through all this trouble with um, new leaf springs and all these parts when you could just buy a lift kit off the shelf and throw some big tires and, and go on about your day. Well, the reason, the biggest reason is articulation. Um, we want this truck uh, to be a pretty capable trail rig, <clears throat> so we want um, some nice flex out of the suspension. Um, and without going a full-blown, you know, four-link or a coilover route, um, this is probably going to be your best option. Uh, an off-the-shelf lift kit, um, basically how they work is it's factory length springs only they have more arch in them um, which will provide you lift but the more arch you put into a leaf spring the stiffer it becomes so your ride quality and flex is going to suffer um, ideally you want longer springs with just a gradual gentle arch in them that's going to provide um, a lot more flex than a severely arch spring better ride quality etc So we got the rear out. Uh, make sure you save the factory rear leaf springs, the 52s. We're going to be putting those in the front. We're going to tear these down, wire wheel them, throw a, coat of, a fresh coat of paint on them, make them look a little nicer. Um, we got some new bushings for them also to go in the front. The next thing we need to do is get the factory shackle hangers out of the rear. We're going to be doing what's called a shackle flip on this truck, which basically just inverts the shackle from the factory position which is going to attribute to some lift. Um, so to get the factory shackle hangers out, they're riveted in from the factory. Uh, a couple of different ways you can get those out. You can use a torch, cut them out. Um, an air chisel works really, really well if you have one. Uh, we don't have one, so we're going to use a grinder and grind down the heads, knock out the, the rest of the rivet with a, with a punch. Um, so we'll get to doing that while we're down there. We'll probably wire wheel the frame a little bit, throw some paint on it, just try to clean it up a little bit, make it look nice and then we'll be ready to mock up that 14 bolt.
All right, the easiest thing I've found to do is to just first take a cutoff wheel, just a, this is just your basic grinder. Make a few cuts into the head, try to get as much material off as you can, and then come back with a grinder, grind the head down flush, and knock them out with a punch. So we got all the factory bracketry out of the way. Now we're ready to start bolting on some new parts. First thing we're gonna do is throw on these shackle flip brackets that we picked up. Now if you'll notice, uh, the holes coordinate with the factory holes on the frame, so these just bolt right in, no, no fabrication needed. Um, but if you'll notice, the, the hanger, shackle hanger is offset to the front. Um, it's not in line with the center of the bracket. Uh, what that's for, um, is if you're gonna run the factory length 52 inch springs in the rear, which you can do, it's totally fine. Um, but the forward offset will allow you to do that. If you're gonna do like us and run the 56 inch springs, all you have to do is, instead of bolting these in um, like factory, swap the brackets side to side. So we're gonna mount what would be the factory driver side bracket on the passenger side. And you can see now this bracket would be offset to the rear if we mount it on this side. And that's gonna allow us to run the longer springs and keep uh, the factory front hanger in the factory position and still have a nice shackle angle. So let's get these bolted in. All right, so now we're ready to throw some shackles on the rear. Uh, these came from DIY 4x and they are beef. This is their UDSR shackle. This is a six inch version. It's 3 8 thick, uh, steel on the sides, gusseted, two inch quarter wall DOM. Uh, they come with greasable poly bushings. Uh, we grabbed also a greasable bolt that you can service without having to take them apart, which is gonna be really cool. Um, so let's get these lubed up and we'll get them ready to go in.
Okay, so now that we got the rear shackle in, we're gonna move on to the springs. Now this is a brand new set of 56 inch springs out of a Suburban that I picked up online. Um, one thing that's unique about these, these are 56 inches if you measure the curve eye to eye, but the center pin that mounts to the axle is offset. Um, the center pin is actually 26 inches from one eye and 30 inches from the other, so it's got a four inch offset. Now the way we want to mount these so the axle remains relatively close to the stock location is offset forward. Um, you can flip these springs around and run them backwards, which will stretch your wheelbase about four inches. Um, but that you're going to have to start cutting a lot of sheet metal, and running these springs backwards is going to is going to hurt um, in terms of axle wrap unless you're running some kind of wrap bar. Um, so we're going to run them offset forward, which would be factory location. Um, this pack factory has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves plus an overload. Um, I think that's too many for what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and take out two leaves. We're going to run six plus the overload and just try it. We're going we're to run it and uh, once we get the vehicle running and see how we like it, we can add them back or take out more if we need to. Um, in addition to all of that, Kurt sent us what's called easy inches, which are these blocks here. Um, what an easy inch does is it bolts into your spring pack right here at the bottom. It gives you an inch of lift, and it also has these offset holes. Now you can mount this hole with the zero offset, which is, it doesn't change your alignment of your axle at all. It's got a plus one and a plus 1.5 inch offset. So you can move your axle, depending on if you mount it forwards or backwards, you can move your axle forward an inch or an inch and a half, or backwards an inch or an inch and a half. So for now, uh, just getting it set up, again, we can change this later. We're going to run the springs in the factory orientation with the pin offset to the front. We're going to run the easy inches with a plus one offset backwards. So total net gain, we're going to, we're going to stretch the wheel, factory wheelbase about one inch in the rear. If you're, if you're gonna use an offset, you wanna use the short stud in the middle hole. That'll be your new pin. Get that in. And we, we wanna offset our axle one inch. So we're gonna put the spring pin back through the one inch offset side. Thread it through, make sure we got our bushing in there. Thread that back through. Now if you'll see from this spring eye to the middle, to the pin, it's 26 inches. So this will be the front side. And we wanna offset the axle one inch to the rear. So if you can see our stud here, we'll just flip that over. Here it's offset to the rear. Again, this is the front side, back side. So we're gonna push the axle back one inch. Got all that threaded through, start the nut. Good to go. Yeah. 
All right, so we got both sides done, springs and shackles and, and hangers. Um, as you can see, this hangs down a lot lower than stock. This is gonna, this setup is gonna net about six inches of lift overall. Um, so we had to rearrange some jack stands, as you can see, to get this monstrosity under here. But we got the 14 bolt wrestled in, and it's roughly um, in its place. Um, it, like we said earlier, it doesn't have any spring perches or shock tabs on it. We cut those off. Um, this came out of a one-ton truck. And one ton square bodies, uh, single wheel or dual rear wheel, doesn't matter. The spring perches were 40 and a half inches on center. Um, a three quarter ton and a half ton truck, like this one, were uh, 42 and a half inches on center, so they're a little bit wider. So we got some new uh, spring perches to throw on, um, new U bolts and new plates to go with it. Uh, so, what we're going to do now, this truck um, is going to get a full LS drivetrain swap. Um, so we won't. We don't know yet what the overall length is going to be. So we can't make shafts. We can't set our pinion angle. So, but what I can do is I can just set these uh, perches on there, get them bolted together, new bolts and new plates, and just leave these unwelded for the time being. This is just going to be a roller. It's not a running vehicle. Um, and once we have our uh, drivetrain swap in, we'll be able to measure for shafts, measure for pinion angle, and we can get all that set, get these burned in permanently. So for now, we're just going to. Get them, get the bolts on, get them bolted up together, and uh, we'll get it centered side to side. Those of you that are eagle-eyed will notice this spring pad relative to the pin in the spring I've got offset. It's because we're using these easy inches. Now these spring pads are, they have three holes drilled, they're one inch on center each. So since we've got the easy inch shifting the axle back one inch, the pin on top is going to be offset one inch, so that's why we put it in the front hole. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for the rear. We got the 14 bolt in. Uh, again, the perches aren't welded because uh, we got to set our pinion angle once we have the new drive line in. Um, but as you can see, it lifted it considerably. Um, the springs appear to be giving us a uh, pretty good ride height. There's, they still got a little arch in them. Uh, the 6 inch shackles from DIY 4x have a really nice angle now that we've got the weight sitting down on the truck. So everything's looking good and we're ready to move on to the front. Love working on rusty stuff. 
no. I mean, like a little bit. Basically, anytime you use an air tool, it slip the floor. Yeah, you might hit it with a hammer and it's just like dirt falling out from under. You should have hit it with your purse. But he's the other thing in the gallery. I like being on this side of the camera. I hate to upgrade the old push pull, but you know, it's a necessity. <laughs> Not the best design. Not the best design. Dauber. 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 Make sure you remove all dirt dauber nests from your project vehicle. Got How'd you get so dirty? Am I dirty bad? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. Alright, so now we've moved on up here to the front. Uh, to do the Dana 60 swap. Now a Dana 60 will bolt straight in to a square body truck. No modifications necessary. Um, if you're going that route, then you'll want to leave a lot of this stuff intact. Um, the route we're going, we're going longer shocks, bigger drive shafts, longer springs, um, crossover steering. So all the factory stuff for our purposes is just garbage. So we've gone ahead and uh, removed the bolts for the shocks, taking the drive shaft loose, um, the shackles for the front. Um, got the steering loose. We're about to remove these last couple bolts holding the springs in. We're going to roll the entire assembly, the uh, factory um, assembly out of the way, and we'll be ready to start mocking up the Dana 60 parts. Got the rear Now that we have all this room under here for activities, we're gonna fill it up with something. I got bugs in my eye. Uh, first thing we need to do is cut off all the factory bracketry, just like the rear. Front shackle mount goes, factory body mount goes, the A-bomb replaces both of those. Um, the factory shock tower, you don't have to take out. You can bolt the factory shock back in. We're gonna do hoops, so I'm gonna take those out. I'm taking out the bump stops also and doing aftermarket. Whatever this thing is right here, not really sure that goes. Um, but we'll get those knocked out, get the frame wire wheel and painted, and we'll be ready to throw some parts under here. What's the, what's the current situation? Just doing body work. Got the crowbar, mini sludge.
All right, so we got all the factory front hangers and the body mount cut off and ground down, got the frame wire wheeled and, and painted up. We're ready to throw on the A-bomb. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the A-bomb is a bumper, winch mount, your front spring hangers and front body mount all incorporated into one. Um, so we went ahead and all the factory bushings on this truck were uh, body bushings were junk. So we got some new body bushings we're gonna throw in here and uh, we'll get this mocked up and installed and then we'll move on to the the front spring rear hangers. Okay, so in the house. That's right. So did these people. Did you get shots of the bumper? Yeah. You can do it in there if you did. Don't tell me what to do. Okay, so we got the A-bomb installed and in place, bolted in. That thing is a monster. Uh, we got the factory uh, front spring shackle hangers um, cut out. Um, this is one right here you can see. Uh, the reason we're replacing these with the DIY part is pretty obvious. It's a lot beefier. Um, the biggest advantage, you can see how small the factory bushing is. Um, the DIY 4x hanger utilizes the same bushings that go in the spring, so everything uh, will be universal. These are going to give us a lot better life and a lot better um, articulation on the suspension. So the only thing you need to do to get these in once the factory ones are out, um, you'll need to enlarge the factory hole in the frame to fit this. Bolt right in, get a bushing in it, and then we'll be ready to hang the springs. <laughs> All right, we got the shackle hangers in. Uh, got the six inch shackles, again, from DIY 4x installed and ready to go. These are the 52s, believe it or not, that came out of the rear. Um, we stripped them down, as I said, painted them. Um, we removed the factory bushings and put in these poly bushings that have a quarter inch lip on either side, so it makes them um, overall uh, half an inch wider to fit the uh, front hangers. If you, don't, if you don't have these bushings, you can use the factory bushings. They make a little quarter inch washer, uh, DIY 4x that you can buy to uh, get your spacing correct. Um, but we, we got the poly bushings, so we're gonna throw these in. Again, got the easy inches on here. We're gonna run the front axle plus one inch forward this time. So we're gonna stretch the wheelbase again one inch. And we'll, so we'll get these installed and we'll be ready to throw the Dana 60 under here. Uh, it's important anytime you're um, installing ac any kind of axle, rebuilding axle, new axle, whatever, um, you always want to use quality um, U-bolts. And in the case of a Dana 60, there's a couple of studs um, that go along with that. Um, make sure, especially on a Dana 60, when you're threading these studs into the cast housing, use a good coat of anti-seize, um, just in case you ever have to take them out. Um, we've got these coated. I'll show you how to get them in, get them started. And what you can do is take your uh, U-bolt nuts, thread one all the way down, or not all the way down, down far enough you can get two, two nuts. Start a second one, and then grab you a couple wrenches, and you just you want to snug them against each other, just snug, and that way you can grab the top one. Thread this all the way in. Just 
just till it's good and snug. It doesn't have to be super tight. And we got our U-bolts again from DIY 4x. Kurt makes these custom, any size, any diameter you want. Just get a hold of him and he can get you fixed up. Come this way. How did you nail the ride height? Like it's it's pretty level. Even with a flat tire. Even with a flat tire, it's perfect. Tire, uh, All right, so we got the Dana 60 in, and that pretty much does it for this one ton swap. Um, one thing you need to pay attention to with these leaf spring swaps is your shackle angle. Um, the A bomb kit from DIY 4x does provide a little bit of adjustability. Uh, we ended up hanging um, the front of the front springs in the second hole from the front on the A bomb. And we ended up with a really nice shackle angle on the front. Same with the rear, we used shackle flip brackets and six inch shackles from a DIY 4x. The angle looks really good. Um, again, with these leaf packs, uh, you do have some adjustability. If you take this out um, and the truck's not flexing the way you want it to, if it's too stiff or too soft, you can add or subtract um, leaves out of the pack um, as you wish. Uh, a, a big question a lot of people ask about this kit is how much of a lift does it add to your truck? Um, the answer is it really depends. It depends on what kind of springs you use, how many springs are in the pack. Um, just for example, like with our setup, we're running the Easy Inches from DIY 4x. So it all depends. This setup that we have here is going to net us about six to six and a half inches of lift overall. So depending on if you use the Easy Inches, depending on how many leaves you have, you know, that can fluctuate, you know, an inch, you know, up to two inches or so. Um, so that pretty much does it for this swap. Huge thanks to Kurt and DIY 4x for helping us out with this. Killer parts and, and beefy parts. You guys really need to check out their stuff. Um, I guess now we officially have a one-ton swap K5. Um, I guess we'll call it a trailer because it's not a truck because this boat anchor in here ain't, sure ain't taking us anywhere. So now I guess the next step in this project is to get rid of this turd of a motor that's in here. Um, we're going to do full LS drivetrain swap. So what do you guys want to see in this in this blazer? You want to see a 4.8 or a 5.3, maybe a 6 liter, maybe even a 6.2? What kind of transmission do you think we should drop behind it in transfer case? Make sure you guys let us know in the comments what you want to see. And uh, be sure to catch us next time on Knucklehead Garage.